Maintaining enough of this neurochemical is extremely important for a healthy brain and cognitive function. When levels decline, one might be left with cognitive impairment, memory loss, poor attention span. Other lesser known consequences can be systemic inflammation and chronic pain, disordered motility and secretion within the gut, and a broken circadian rhythm. Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition. In this video, we're going to look at the effects of low acetylcholine on the nervous system and look at five ways by which you can increase this neurotransmitter. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter involved in cognition, in particular memory and focused attention. Neurons which use acetylcholine are referred to as cholinergic neurons. Because of its central roles in memory, the cholinergic system has been heavily studied in various types of cognitive impairment, including memory loss and most notably dementia. A large body of evidence suggests that acetylcholine can decline with age and this may account for the reduced cognitive capacity and memory loss in the elderly. Furthermore, medicinal substances known to increase acetylcholine have demonstrated promising results in improving memory in various clinical trials. But here's the thing, acetylcholine is not just involved in cognition. There's a lot more that it does in the human body. It's the primary neurotransmitter used by the vagus nerve which is part of the parasympathetic nervous system. This has direct innovations with the internal organs and ultimately governs the rest and repair state of the living organism. It's how our body counteracts the stress response. Not only does poor cholinergic activity cause dysautonomia, the vagus nerve, which uses acetylcholine, is one of the body's main tools to turn off the inflammatory response. It does this via the cholinergic anti-inflammatory pathway. When this pathway loses its power, this paves the way for chronic inflammation. Cholinergic neurons are also responsible for dampening the sensation of pain and have been implicated in disorders of chronic pain as well. One of the least appreciated functions of this system is to tell the digestive organs what to do and at what times. Without enough acetylcholine, your stomach can't make enough stomach acid. It also can't contract in the way that it needs to. You can't make enough digestive enzymes, you can't secrete enough bile, your intestine doesn't contract as it should do and you end up with dysmotility or constipation. In other words, acetylcholine is super important for the way that the brain communicates to the gut and tells it what to do at what times. The system also allows the body to keep its own time by maintaining the circadian rhythm and a normal sleep pattern. It also has downstream effects on the rhythmic output of other neurochemicals such as dopamine. Important to note is that acetylcholine itself follows a daily circadian rhythm, being highest in the waking hours and lowest during slow wave sleep. A disrupted circadian rhythm is thought to cause abnormal acetylcholine levels in the brain and damage this system as a whole. Therefore, optimizing your habits to promote a healthy sleep-wake cycle is probably the most important thing you could do in this regard. This includes getting abundant sunlight exposure in the morning time, avoidance of late night eating habits, and blocking artificial light at night time. However, there's also a bunch of other stuff which can damage the neurons which make acetylcholine and cause a deficiency of this neurotransmitter. These factors include inflammation in the brain, which can stem from an infection, from toxicity, or from a leaky blood-brain barrier. These neurons also have a high turnover of energy, meaning that they require good mitochondrial function. Therefore, mitochondrial dysfunction probably plays a key role. Damaged mitochondria and oxidative stress impair the release of acetylcholine and can inactivate its receptor. The cholinergic hypothesis of cognitive aging suggests that a combination of these events are what likely leads to an impairment in the cholinergic system as a whole. This happens as we age. There likely isn't just one cause for low acetylcholine levels, but many. What we do know is that low levels are associated with reduced cognitive function and memory loss in older adults. Fortunately, there's some things that we can do about this, and that's what we're gonna focus on in the next section of this video. First of all, we focus on providing the raw material and building blocks to make this molecule. We try to improve the release of acetylcholine from neurons, and finally, to prevent its breakdown. The two things which we need to make this molecule are acetylcoenzyme A and a nutrient called choline. The direct precursor for acetylcoenzyme A is vitamin B5, 
and we make abundant levels of acetyl-CoA during the metabolism of glucose and fat. Vitamin B5 is ubiquitous, found in most foods, and a deficiency is not thought to be common. However, a body of research suggests that localized deficiency limited to the brain may play a key role in diseases of the central nervous system. Studies show there to be a regional deficiency in specific regions of the brain in different types of dementia, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's. Quoting the authors of one report, this study supports the idea that vitamin B5 deficiency could play a significant role in myelin loss, acetylcholine deficiency, neurodegeneration, and cognitive impairment, all of which occur in age-related dementias. Indeed, pantothenic acid supplementation has been shown to increase acetylcholine synthesis and protect this system from the damaging effects of alcohol. Another way in which we can make acetyl coenzyme A is by taking acetyl L carnitine. This molecule is useful for enhancing the rate at which cells can burn fat for energy, but also provides the raw material for acetylcholine synthesis. For this reason, it's been suggested that it can be useful for counteracting age related cholinergic deficits. Not only was carnitine shown to enhance acetylcholine production, it was also very effective in improving depression. Furthermore, it can also increase the output of another neurotransmitter called dopamine. The next building block for acetylcholine is another nutrient called choline. The best way that we obtain choline is through eating foods which are rich in the diet. The three highest foods are egg yolk, liver, and salmon. Interestingly, the uptake of choline into the brain is another thing which decreases during aging. Although the body can technically synthesize choline on its own, there's good reason to believe that many are running a deficit. For that reason, supplemental choline should be a priority for anyone looking to enhance cognitive function or improve memory. Two of the best forms will be CDP choline, also known as citicoline, or alpha GPC. Both have shown promising results for improving cognition and memory scores in various scientific studies. So aside from providing the body with the raw material building blocks to make this neurochemical, there's one herb which not only helps us make acetylcholine, but also prevents it from being broken down. It's been studied and it's shown good results for improving working memory and cognitive function in animal studies, and it has a long tradition of use for improving brain function in traditional Indian medicine. This herb is called Bacopa and is otherwise known as Brahmi. One of the mechanisms of this herb is to enhance the action of the enzyme which makes acetylcholine. This enzyme is called choline acetyltransferase. Another way in which it's thought to work is by inactivating another enzyme which destroys acetylcholine. This is called acetylcholinesterase. In this way, it preserves what acetylcholine is sticking around and allows it to last for longer. And finally, we come to my favorite B vitamin, that is thiamine. Although the exact mechanism isn't yet known, thiamine has long been understood to be a necessary component of the cholinergic system and is needed for the release of acetylcholine, but also for its action on cells. For many reasons, thiamine is being used in Alzheimer's research and has been slated as a practical prevention method by some research. A thiamine derivative called solbutymin, which gets into the brain, was shown to enhance long-term memory, probably through enhancing the cholinergic system, and yielded very positive results in a study on Alzheimer's disease. Benfotiamin is another thiamine derivative also being studied in this condition. TTFD similarly gets into the brain, so either one of these three forms would probably be appropriate for this purpose. For reference, the example doses of all of these nutrients are as follows. Remember, this is for educational purposes only. Vitamin B5 is between 500 and 2000 milligrams per day. Acetyl L-carnitine, 500 to 1000. CDB choline or alpha GPC, 500 to 1000 milligram per day. Thiamine in one of the derivative forms between 300 and 600 milligrams per day potentially even more than that, and for Bacopa, between 200 and 500 milligrams per day. So if you liked this video or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe, share it far and wide with others who you might think might also benefit from the information. If that's all, thanks for watching and see you next time.